What can you say about Shin Megami Tensei that hasn't already been said? It's simply one of the best JRPG series out there. It offers some of the best storytelling, characters, gameplay, and replayability of the genre, with each game in the series being unique in its own way. Since the first game all the way back in 1987, it spawned countless spin-off series, the most popular of which is none other than the Persona series. I've been a huge fan of Persona ever since I played my first game back in 2012, when I was just 15 years old. Ever since then, I've been hooked on the series, and because of it, I was also able to discover the rest of the Shin Megami Tensei series. With Joker being confirmed for Smash Bros. Ultimate and a whole slew of Persona 5 spin-offs on the way, more fans are being introduced to the series than ever before. So I figured, what better time would there be for me to do a video where I rank every Persona game, starting with my least favorite, going up to my favorite. Now. I just want to make it clear that just because a game ranks low on this list, that doesn't mean I hate the game. In fact, I love every single game in the series, but I do think some games in the series are better than others. Keep in mind that the ranking on this list is just my opinion. I also won't be looking at spin-off titles, so none of the dancing games, no arena, and no queue. I'm only looking at the mainline Persona games. I will be taking re-releases into account for each game's placement. Oh, and lastly, there will be the odd spoiler here and there, so don't say you were never warned. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on with the video. Persona 1. This is the one that most people probably saw coming. During the mid to late 90s when the Megami Tensei series was getting more and more spin-offs and re-releases, Persona 1 was released in 1996, taking on a completely different direction than the rest of the Megami Tensei series, this time focusing on the inner conflicts of the characters rather than an epic war between ideologies. Shin Megami Tensei If and Devil Summoner are both considered to be the godfathers of the Persona series, but it didn't get established as its own franchise until Persona 1 actually came out. It is the game that kicked off the series, but it's also seen by many fans as being the black sheep of the Persona series. Now, even though it's at the bottom of the list, I do think Persona 1 gets criticized by the fandom a little too much. The main reason for the criticism is the gameplay. Unlike the rest of the series, Persona 1 is a first-person dungeon crawler. I do think it's a bit unfitting for Persona, but think back to 1996 when it first came out. Just about every other game in the Megami Tensei series up until that point was also in first person. I do think, however, that the battle system also should have been in first person. Going from third person dungeon crawling to first person battles feels fine, but doing it the other way around just feels weird. It also lacks the press turn system that the later Persona and SMT games would use, but again, no other SMT game at the time had this. On the other hand, the battle animations just don't look that good and neither does the art. The art for the game is done by the man, the myth, the legend himself, Kazuma Kaneko, but it was back when he was still using his 80s anime style for the games, before his iconic black lip style, which is why the characters look the way they do. However, the art style doesn't stop the characters from being interesting, and that's what I like the most about this game, the characters. The game doesn't have social links, but I honestly think the story develops the characters well enough that it doesn't need them. One problem that plagues the later Persona games is the insanely long introductions, but Persona 1 doesn't do that. The story becomes engaging right from the beginning, and it just sucks you right in, making you want to find out what will happen next while getting to learn more about the characters. This game is also infamous for the PS1 version in North America having what I like to call a 4Kids localization, where the translators not only translate the product, but take it a step further and replace the Japanese setting with an American setting, giving the characters western names, and censoring a bunch of other things for pretty dumb reasons. They even made one of the characters black. Thankfully, they didn't do this for the PSP re-release, but the PSP version did change the soundtrack. Now, I don't hate the new soundtrack for the PSP version like a lot of people do, but I think it's incredibly unfitting. They tried to make the soundtrack all hip and cool for the kids that started with Persona 3 and 4, but they kept the rest of the game, an over 10 year old game at the time, the same. I still recommend playing the PSP version though because of the translation. 
And if you have a hacked PSP, you can actually patch the PS1 soundtrack back into the PSP version. Persona 1 is definitely a unique experience. Some people like it, some people hate it. I definitely think every Persona fan should at least give it a chance, and even though I do like the game and think it doesn't deserve all the harsh criticism it gets, it is still my least favorite of the series. Persona 4, another controversial game in the series. Released on December 9th, 2008 in North America, when the PS2 was still desperately clinging to life, Persona 4 released. Like the previous games, the game once again follows the adventures of a silent high school student. However, now the story is more of a murder mystery. You and your friends dungeon crawl your way through the TV world to save the next murder victim and try to find out who the culprit is, all while juggling high school life. Despite releasing to overwhelmingly positive feedback from critics, Persona 4 has become stigmatized by veterans of the SMT series for taking on a more cartoony and lighthearted tone than the previous games, and some even think that because of the fans it brought in, its influence still bleeds into mainline games to this day. I personally think that's a bit silly, and I think this game gets way too much flack from the SMT community, but there are some things that they say that I do agree with. Gameplay-wise, Persona 4 is pretty much a reskin of Persona 3, which already had a good enough combat system, but it includes many improvements that weren't featured in the original or FES, such as the ability to command your party members, as well as there being more variety in the dungeon design. I do have some nitpicks with the gameplay, though. The balancing is considerably worse. The strongest physical skills deal much more damage than the strongest magic skills, making magic-focused Personas much less useful later in the game. Physical also has been condensed into just one affinity, unlike Persona 3, which had Strike, Slash, and Pierce. Considering that the majority of enemies use physical attacks, once you get a Persona that blocks physical, the game is pretty much a breeze. Which brings me to another point. The game is much easier than the previous SMT games. Some areas gave me problems, but overall, it was way easier than any SMT game I've played before, and I did play on the highest difficulty. The cast is great for the most part. Even if the majority of characters are somewhat anime cliched, I don't think that stops the cast from being enjoyable and memorable. The story is also good, but in many ways it's a step down from the previous games. It gets predictable toward the middle, becoming less a matter of what's going to happen next to who am I going to be saving this time and what's his deal going to be. The social links are also a mixed bag. There are some I love, but for the most part they feel like a step down from Persona 3. My favorite parts of the story were when I was just casually hanging out with the cast doing what normal high school students do. I felt like the transitioning and the balancing between these scenes and the murder solving are handled very well, along with the emotional scenes. The voice acting is also top tier, featuring an all-star cast with the likes of Yuri Lowenthal, Laura Bailey, and Troy Baker. I also love the music. Persona 4 takes on a more J-pop style featuring the voice of Shihoko Hirata. It's my least favorite soundtrack in the entire Persona series, but I still love it, and it makes the grinding I had to do much more bearable. Overall, I think Persona 4 is a great game that did a lot of good for the franchise, despite what some other fans of the SMT series say about it. It's still one of my least favorites though, but it's just because I think the others are that good. This is going to be my death warrant. In 2017, Persona 5 released in the West to both critical and commercial success, bringing in more people into the series than ever before, and the series has been exploding in popularity ever since. Even many longtime veterans of the series have said that Persona 5 is their favorite game in the series. Where do I stand in this? Well, I think you guys should look at this game's placement on the list again. I love Persona 5, don't get me wrong but it's not my favorite game in the series. And honestly, I feel like for a game that came eight years after Persona 4 and got delayed almost two years for quality assurance, Persona 5 is a tiny bit disappointing. The story takes on a very interesting premise. You and your friends band together to form a group called the Phantom Thieves, where you steal the hearts of evil people. The beginning of the story tackles serious and realistic issues with characters that are relatable and does a great job of developing the first antagonist. But after this, I just didn't have the same motivation to take down the other antagonist the same way I did with the first one. And aside from a few moments close to the end, the story was extremely predictable, even more so than Persona 4. The cast is also a mixed bag. 
for every character I love, there's a character I hate, and another character that I want to like, but can't because they didn't get enough screen time for me to care about them. Oh, and there's also Morgana. I never would have thought Atlas could have made a more annoying mascot than Teddy, but Morgana blew my expectations to the freaking moon. There's also some questionable design choices, like how restrictive it gets at certain points. We've all seen the memes about Morgana forcing you to go to sleep early, not letting you use the time you have to increase your stats or level up your social links, now called confidants. Increasing your stats is also much harder than it is in Persona 3 and 4, and on top of this, the stat requirements for confidants are much more demanding than in those games. Sometimes you might spend weeks trying to get a stat to a certain level so that you can continue a confidant, only to reach another roadblock where you find out you now have to level up another stat that you've been ignoring. I also have mixed feelings on the confidants giving you certain abilities. It's good because it gives you motivation to complete the confidants that are motivations other than being able to fuse stronger personas, but at the same time it's bad because crutch skills could be locked behind a confidant that you didn't even know about. Persona 5 also has the same overpowered physical skills from Persona 4. But more enemies block or resist physical now, so there's still a little more reason to use magic personas. But now let's talk about some of the good things that Persona 5 did, better than any of the other Persona games in some cases. Persona 5 is absolutely gorgeous, and I'm not just talking about the graphics, I'm also talking about the UI, the art, the animations, everything about Persona 5 is visually stunning. It's without doubt the best looking game in the Mega Ten series, and it will age like a fine wine and look great for decades to come. The dungeon crawling is also the best of the Persona series. Instead of going through a series of randomly generated dungeons like you did in Persona 3 and 4, Persona 5 has its own intricately designed dungeons that all have their fair share of gimmicks and puzzles that make traversing them fun. I mean, these dungeons might even rival Nocturne for being the best in the Mega Ten series. It also has great confidants. It's debatable whether or not they're better than the ones in Persona 3, but I think most of us can agree they're a huge improvement over the ones from Persona 4. The music and the voice acting? It's all very good as well, although it does get repetitive faster than the music for 3 and 4 in my opinion. It also has the most longevity of the Persona series. Persona 3 and 4 both took me around 90 to 100 hours to beat my first time, but Persona 5 took me over 130, and just like 3 and 4, it's replayable. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the battle system. It largely copies from Persona 3 and 4, but adds a ton of new features, and even some elements from the mainline SMT games, such as demon negotiation. Oh yeah, you actually fight demons this time. They're still called shadows, but I'm glad you fight them and not those black blobs that you fought in Persona 3 and 4. In fact, overall, Persona 5 is more like mainline SMT than any of the other Persona games since 3. It even has DLC costumes from the other SMT games, and Persona 1 and 2. It's a shame that they took the title Shin Megami Tensei off of Persona 5 in English. Hopefully they'll bring that title back when Persona 5 R comes out. The Persona 2 Duology. I'm counting these as both one game because they're both part of the same story and they're pretty much identical in terms of gameplay. The Persona 2 duology is everything that a sequel should be. Releasing around three years after Persona 1 in Japan, Persona 2 Innocent Sin took everything that made the first Persona great and brought it to a whole new level of awesomeness, while also fixing the majority of flaws from the first game. The story is easily the best in the whole series. Once again, you take on the role of a silent protagonist, this time who joins together with his friends to take on a mass terroristic cult. It may not seem all that interesting at first, but if you stick with it, it'll suck you right in. It's full of twists and turns where you'll go from fighting the mass cult to an army of longinus wielding Nazis to ancient Mayan aliens to Hitler. There is a Persona game where you fight Hitler as a boss. Oh, sorry, I meant to say Fuhrer, totally different character in the PSP version. You would think that this would all result in an incomprehensible mess of a story, but it really doesn't. It's a perfect blend of mystery, suspense, action, and emotion with an ending that almost had me in tears. Now onto the cast. In addition to the story, Persona 2 has, in my opinion, the best cast of the whole series. It's full of well-written, well-developed, and relatable characters, and this is all done without social links. I honestly don't think there's a single character in the duology that I don't like. Speaking of the duology, let's talk about Eternal Punishment. Eternal Punishment came out about a year later in Japan, and surprisingly, also came out in North America, although we weren't lucky enough to get the PSP version. 
Eternal Punishment tied many of the loose ends that were left with Innocent Sin's ending, featuring a new cast of characters, many of which only had brief cameos in the first game, and they're just as likable, if not more so, than the cast from Innocent Sin. It also features some characters from the first Persona. Whether or not the story is better than Innocent Sin is up for debate, but either way, it's great and a fitting conclusion to the duology. Now let's talk about the gameplay. Unfortunately, like the first game, Persona 2 frequently comes under fire from fans of the newer games for its gameplay supposedly having not aged well. Well, I disagree. The dungeon crawling takes on a third person perspective, just like 3, 4, and 5, and the dungeons are also excellently designed. I wouldn't say they're as good as Persona 5's dungeons, but they're definitely better than the random dungeons of 3 and 4. The battle system is also similar to Persona 1's, but includes many improvements, such as the animations being much better and the overall combat being faster. I wouldn't say the combat is as fun as the later games, but it's nowhere near as bad as the fanbase makes it out to be, and fans of old school RPGs will feel right at home with it. Lastly, I want to talk about the music. Thankfully, the PSP re-release didn't do what Persona 1 did, and instead included the soundtrack from the original game, plus an all-new arranged soundtrack, which you can swap between any time you want and both versions of the music are amazing. The Persona 2 duology is simply a masterpiece. It's one of the best games I've ever played, and definitely an experience that no gamer should miss. My only major complaint is the lack of longevity. Each game will take you around 40 to 50 hours to beat, and like Persona 1, it doesn't have the same replayability of the later three games. Because of this, there is one game in the series that I like just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more. You already figured it out through the process of elimination. It's Persona 3. Good old Persona 3. This was the game that introduced me to both the Persona and SMT series. Coming six years after Persona 2 Eternal Punishment during SMT's golden age, Persona 3 rebooted the series and would be the foundation for both Persona 4 and 5, being one of the first JRPGs combining dating sim elements with RPG elements. There were JRPGs that did this before, but I feel like Persona 3 was the first game that did it right, balancing them in a way that didn't feel like a gimmick. Just like Persona 4, this was my favorite part of the game, just spending time in the overworld working on my social links and doing the things that high school students do in their everyday lives. The cast, I think, while not being better than Persona 2, I think it's the best of the Neo Persona games. There are a few characters that I feel were undeveloped, but the characters that were developed, I grew more and more attached to them as the story progressed, even if I didn't do their social links. The story is also best of the post-PS1 Persona games. You're an orphan who moves back into your original home city 10 years after your parents died there in an accident. Once you discover your power, you're invited to join Seas, which is a group that's focused on using your power to defeat shadows and eliminate the Dark Hour. Unlike 3 and 4, you're now dragged into a conflict that's been going on for years before the game started, and as the story progresses, you learn more about the truth of what's been going on and begin to piece together how it all connects to your own past. This, in my opinion, gives Persona 3 the biggest sense of accomplishment of any of the Persona games. And that's what I like about this story. At the start, everything just looks hopeless and depressing, but 100 hours of gameplay and an in-game year later, you're able to overcome all that. The music, in my opinion, is also the best of the whole series, even better than Persona 2. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, and I didn't like it at first either, but it grew on me, and it made me appreciate genres of music that I never thought I would enjoy up until that point. The opening cinematics for every version are great, but my favorite is the one from FES. Just imagine being a 15-year-old kid seeing that for the first time. The voice cast is also the best in my opinion, featuring the voices of Vic Mignogna, Liam O'Brien, and Karen Strassman, just to name a few, and every character's voice is a perfect match. One of the biggest criticisms of Persona 3 is the main dungeon, Tartarus. I'm probably all alone here, but I actually like Tartarus. It's not my favorite dungeon in the series, and I'll admit going through each block the first time is a huge slog. But the randomness and having the game's entire dungeon be in one place makes grinding and quests that involve backtracking much more convenient, and less repetitive. Each time you go to the floor, it'll have a different layout, and if you go to Tartarus when it's unstable, the floors will throw a different gimmick at you each time, such as a floor being with all-powerful enemies or a floor being filled with nothing but golden hands, which can be great for grinding. 
Now, I'm not completely blinded by nostalgia. I do recognize that Persona 3 is a flawed game. It introduced the new battle system that would be used by both 4 and 5, but it lacked a lot of the important features that those games had, such as the ability to control party members. Combine that with the dumb AI, and the game can get pretty frustrating at times. However, the main reason I put it above Persona 2 is because of the PSP re-release. Not only did this version add all the new gameplay features from Persona 4, but it also added an entirely new feature that no other game in the Persona series has done, the option to play as a female protagonist. Playing as the female protagonist is a completely different experience than playing as the male. You get new music, new social links, it's almost like playing an entirely different game. Persona 3 was already packed with content, but this is just too much and it's all on a console that you can play in the palm of your hand. I remember when I played Portable for the first time, I would take my PSP everywhere with me, playing it before and after school, on the bus to soccer games, even in church. Good times, good times. Persona 3 is an awesome game. It's a masterpiece, and I can't recommend it enough. I personally recommend Portable because of the new additions, but if you don't have a PSP or a Vita, you're still getting a solid experience. Just prepare for some frustrating moments. In conclusion, Persona truly is a great franchise. It's been one of the best JRPG series out there for over 20 years. Even though I like some games more than others, I still like every game in the series, and I recommend that you play every game in it from start to finish. I don't know when we'll get Persona 6, but with the success of Persona 5 and the series now being more popular than ever, it's safe to say that this series is going to live a long life. We already know that they're continuing it with Persona 5 R. I just hope Persona 5 doesn't get milked too much before we get Persona 6. I also hope Atlas doesn't get too hung up on Persona 5 that they forget about Shin Megami Tensei 5. That's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you disagree with the order of the list, feel free to tell me what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more Persona and SMT videos. I also want to give a shout out to Michael Pham for letting me use his covers for this video. He's a very talented musician that does covers of the Persona songs on his channel. I'll have a link to it in the description. Till next time.